right, thanks, Michelle. There's now a 60% chance that La Nina will develop between June and August. That's according to NOAA's latest forecast. The agency still thinks there's an 85% chance La Nina will be in full effect by November until January. As we transition out of one of the strongest El Nino events on record since 1950, what does it mean for the U.S.? Farm Journal's Tyne Morgan explores just that. The drought picture has drastically changed over the past six months. Nutrient Ag Solutions Senior Science Fellow Eric Snodgrass says there's no doubt El Nino has helped soften the drought. Fall, we had 40% of the lower 48 in some form of drought. Uh, now it's down about 18%. Meteorologists say El Nino peaked in December, but the ripple effects are still being felt now. Even though we've long since passed the peak of El Nino, we still see a weather pattern that is very consistent with what you would expect to see during El Nino. So we're kind of seeing the, the, the death throes of this El Nino, a lot of southern track storms coming in through California. And as El Nino now fades, La Nina is knocking at the door. I feel like the transition to La Nina is already underway. The thing about that is that the impacts often are not felt for many months. Rippy says just like the impacts of El Nina are still being felt four months after its peak, the claws of La Nina may not come until fall. Even if we make that transition into La Nina by, say, summertime, we're likely not to feel the impacts of La Nina until we get into the autumn of 2024. So that's good news for the growing season. Snodgrass says the transition to La Nina is so hard to predict because of something atmospheric scientists call the spring forecast barrier. And what we found is that our ability to predict well how El Nino is going to transition before you get through the month of May is pretty bad. Once we get into May and start to pay attention to how those ocean temperature changes, we'll be much better at predicting it, and a lot rides on it. In the past, El Nino to La Nina transitions, Snodgrass says it's created a drought scenario somewhere in the Cotton Belt. And while the summer moisture scenario may be hard to forecast at this point, Snodgrass says he's confident about one thing. It could be a hot summer. I do think one thing about this summer, and that is I'm expecting warmer than average temperatures. Most of that coming in warmer overnight lows, though, based on what I know now. And a lot of that is predicated on the collapse of El Nino to neutral conditions and eventually into La Nina. All right, thanks, Tyne. And here's a look at the latest drought monitor. It shows dryness and drought expanded in the central and southern plains, while there's extreme drought in areas of Idaho and Montana due to a lack of snow. But drought conditions continue to improve in the Midwest. Just under 18% of the nation is in some sort of drought. Last year at this time, about 25% of the nation was impacted by drought.